After an exhausting roller coaster of an election, Donald Trump has made history as the only second U.S. president to serve two non consecutive terms. The first was Grover Cleveland in 1892. He's also made history as the first convicted criminal to be elected to the White House, and he's the first Republican to win the popular vote since George W. Bush did in 2004. Kamala Harris also made history as the first woman of color to top a major party ticket after already making history as the first woman and the first woman of color to hold the office of the vice president. Americans are feeling a gamut of emotions this week, from fear to excitement, from sadness to optimism, depending on which side of the aisle they sit. But now it's time for the country to find a way to move forward in a landscape that has been increasingly divided. And who better to break it down in this historically complicated election cycle than The Hill's editor-in-chief, Bob Cusack. Bob, it's great to see you. Look, you've covered every presidential election since 1996. Have you experienced anything like this? No, no. And and the country is a lot more polarized uh, than it was back then, or even, I would say, 12 years ago. Uh, This was a historic election. This was a nightmare for Democrats. And now they have to pick up the pieces. This was an unusual one because, listen, we had assassination attempts. We had the president basically being pushed out uh, as the nominee. Uh, And then, and I never thought, I mean, I thought certainly Trump could win. Did I think he was going to win the popular vote? No, not at all. That was the biggest stunner. Well, it seems like now he can easily say, or his supporters can easily say, he has a mandate. Absolutely. uh, Especially with a Republican Senate and what looks increasingly to be a Republican Congress. So on that point of how, you know, the the margin he won by, do you think the polls underestimated how well he would perform? Because there was that New York Times Santa College poll that came out with the Saturday or Monday before the election, which showed a pretty tight race in all of the seven battlegrounds. But then you had the Iowa poll showing him behind in a pretty deep red state. So were the polls right or wrong? No, they were wrong. They were wrong yet again. And we wrote about this. Uh, We talked to pollsters and they said, well, we've accounted for that Trump effect. Because remember, in 2016, obviously he shocked the world, right? He beat Hillary Clinton. So he overperformed. In 2020, too, the polls said he was going to get beat, uh, not soundly, but, you know, pretty decisively. It was very close. He overperformed. And yet again, in 2024, the pollsters were wrong, and they were very wrong, especially when you look at other races like the Senate race in uh, Texas and mm-hmm. Florida. Uh, they really underestimated Trump yet again. Well, and Trump, just looking at Florida, for example, he went up by 13 points. Last year, it was by three points. I mean, we knew it was a, or last cycle, I should say, we knew right. it was going to be a, a red-leaning state, but my goodness, he's just run up the margin. Yeah, and, and, and she, you know, she won New Jersey by five points. I mean, that's just incredible. And and to see where Trump came, because in the midterms, polls show that he was the biggest loser of 2022 because he was picking bad candidates and they lost the Senate uh, because of a lot of Trump controversies. He turned it around, ran a very camp, very good campaign, got a little undisciplined at times, of course. We're talking about Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, but he connected with voters and she did not. So, Was this a question of Donald Trump did something right and Kamala Harris did something wrong? Or was it sort of just the environment was primed for Donald Trump in the country? I definitely think that everything, uh, as far as the economy, which is, of course, usually the most important thing, uh, 6, 7, and 10 think we're on on the wrong track. The nation's on the wrong track. The economy's going the wrong way. So that really played to Trump's strengths. And Harris had a tough card because she had to deal with uh, unpopular Biden policies, mm-hmm. uh, and she really didn't differentiate. She made some major mistakes in this campaign, but Trump also, I think, gave more tangible economic ideas like, hey, I'm not going to tax tips. I'm not going to tax Social Security. And her, yes, she did have a plan, as she said, but if you ask people what is the plan, they can't answer that question. So she was the first, you know, the second woman to lead a major party's presidential ticket, Democratic ticket, and also the first woman of color. And we know that oftentimes in general, women, women of color are held to a different standard. So there has been this conversation about sexism and racism. This is going to be a debate. I think we're still uh, debating 2016 and the role it played in that election. But, you know, how big of a role do you think it played here. I mean, it's looking at white women, for example. White women largely swung towards Donald Trump. Latina women, she still won Latinas, but by a very narrow margin. Black women strongly backed her. I mean, was this 
about identity, um, or was it sort of a mixture of a number of different factors? Well, Julia, I mean, you have to look at it. This country has never elected a, a woman no. president. Now, at some point, I think in our lifetimes, that will change. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but that's where Democrats have to really uh, analyze this. Why, why did, why did they lose so much support among uh, Latinos uh, as well as African Americans compared to last time? You know, it, why? You know, Democrats talked about immigration reform. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of Latinos said no. Actually, the economy is more important. Uh, than that. So that's where Democrats have to do their own autopsy to figure out, yes, there were reasons and there were things that were going against Harris. But I've always said uh, either side going into the election can win this thing. And there's, there's going to be a lot of excuses. But honestly, uh, Trump ran a better campaign, had some advantages, but also had some disadvantages. Remember, the incumbent is tough to beat. But in this case, being the incumbent probably hurt her. Right, right. And I want to turn to a Reuters Ipsos poll conducted in the hours after Trump was officially declared the victor. It showed that one in four Americans want Trump to address immigration in his first 100 days. We know that large majorities believe he will carry out or order at least mass deportations. It's something he's talked about quite a bit. But logistically, I think there's a lot of questions. How can this happen? Will there be legal challenges from you know left-leaning um, you know civil rights? groups, for example. I mean, is this realistic at the end of the day? It depends on how they do it. I mean, certainly he has said, you know, promises, uh, delivered promises kept. They're going to, they're not going to abandon immigration. Immigration is going to be the top issue, especially with executive orders right out of the gate on day one. But you mentioned a good point. Like, how big are these deportations going to be? How legal are they going to be? And also, how much how much is it going to cost to deport? Even people who want to do this acknowledge this is going to cost a lot of money. And of course, this nation has record debt, and policymakers uh, are going to have to address that at some point as well. Finally, as we move forward, we know that Susie Wiles has been announced yeah. as Trump's chief of staff. She has played such an integral role in this campaign, sort of engineering this, keeping him on message as much as she can. He's yes. not always on message, right. but she's you know tried her best, and he did really drill in on the economy and immigration that seem to be make a huge impact. But what can we expect from a Susie Wiles chief of staff? Um, how different is she going to be from sort of the multiple chiefs of staff he ran through during his first administration? Well, it, it's a historic uh, pick, yeah. and it's his first pick as president-elect. Um, and it's a smart one. Uh, obviously, she's the first female chief of staff. Um, and I think it's a great pick because she, uh, Trump trusts her. She ran a very good campaign. At times, Trump has to be Trump, and she right. had to let him be Trump. Um, but, but he also, anybody that Trump picks for this second term has to be a loyalist. Don, Don Jr. has said that. So I think uh, Susie Wiles will, will realize, OK, we can do this, Mr. President, but we can't do that. And Trump trusts her and will listen to her. And he needs people like her around him. She's uh, definitely been a loyalist. Going back to 2016, I yeah. mean, nearly eight years now, so it's been quite a ride for them. Bob Cusack, as always, thank you so much for joining us. And that's it for What's America Thinking. I'm Julia Manchester. Come back next week, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hills YouTube channel.